Hi, and thanks for joining me. Um, today I'm going to show you how I'm going to put together the mini album uh, with the Attic Charm uh, paper from Blue Fern. And um, I'm going to do the best I can uh, to give you the measurements as I go along. And you might have to stop the video every once in a while to, you know, have the measurements repeated. I'm going to actually suggest that um, you watch the whole video first and then go back and uh, try and make one if you're interested, just in case I make uh, a mistake, which is not out of the norm. Uh, I think all of us can under can relate to that. Um, I kind of was thinking about the title of the paper, Attic Charm, and it really made me think about when I was a kid and how I would go into my grandparents' house and I would go into their back room. So it wasn't really an attic, it was a back room. And I just remember being so nosy and I would go through her, my grandparents' dresser and they had boxes back there and they had, you know, envelopes and just, it was like... I don't know. I, I've always been nosy. And so I was, I would go through the stuff in that room. So as I was putting together the ideas for this album, I just kept thinking opening things. So a lot, I wanted each page to have something that was tucked away or, um, something that you could pull out, um, just to kind of relate to when I was in my grandparents' house looking through things. So that was where my mind went. Uh, this album is going to have five pages. And so to get started, we're going to make the base page. And I've already put some of them together to make this go faster. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut out five pieces that are eight and a half by seven and a half. Okay. And so eight and a half by seven and a half. Okay, and we are going to score this paper at a half of an inch on each end when it's at the eight and a half inch side. So let me get my scoreboard. Oops, sorry. And I, you know, I, whenever I see people using this scoreboard, I never see them use the bone folder that comes with the score tool that comes with it. I don't know why. Sometimes it's a little sharp, so it might poke through the paper, but the paper I'm using is very durable, so I'm just going to go with it. So this is my 8.5 by 7.5, and, and I'm going to score at a half of an inch. And my paper is kind of thick, so I'm going to do it twice. And then because it's 8.5 long, I'm going to go ahead and score at 8 inches so that I have a half inch score mark on each side. That doesn't look, it looked like I already went off, didn't I? Looks like I'm going off to the side. There we go. So I have a little extra there. I already made a mistake. Oh well. We'll make it work. So then we're going to fold these score lines back. And I use a different bone folder for burnishing. This one's one of those Teflon ones. I really like it. So fold that on. And on the other side... Give it a good burnishing. Okay. And then the paper that is seven and a half by seven and a half, we are going to adhere this on top of it. And that's going to become our base page that has an opening at one end for the hinge and the other end for a tag. So to adhere this, when I'm constructing my mini albums, I usually use score tape. And this is the 3 8 inch score tape. Am I on the camera? And um, I used to use the 1 4th, but this obviously, because it's 3 8 uh, covers more. And I think when you're doing the construction of the album, it's good to get as much adhesive to keep your book together when you go to all that work. So whenever you put down the score tape, you should probably give it a good burnishing so it stays on. Now I've seen people do this in different ways. I'm not one of those people who takes off a corner and then lines it up. I just take off the tape and line it up. So I'm going to take off one strip. Now watch, I'll probably regret it. When I put it down, it won't be even, but the goal is to get it even. And I'm going to turn it sideways and kind of hold down that flap with my fingers 
and just line it up so it goes to the edge. And I'm happy with that. And make sure it's down real good. So then these pages end up being seven and a half by seven and a half. Take off the second piece. Hopefully this will fit just right on top of that. Line it up. And push it down real good. Okay, so our base pages are seven and a half by seven and a half. And um, when we adhere the or put this mini album together, this will be my hinge side, and this is will be where a tag is. So you need to make five of those. So cut out five pieces that were eight and a half by seven and a half, and five that are seven and a half by seven and a half. And then on the eight and a half inch ones, we scored it half inch on each side. So make five of those, and then while you're at it, you might as well make the tags uh, that we're going to insert on the side, so we can get some of that cutting out of the way. So you're going to need five tags, and I cut those at six and three-fourths by seven. So you're gonna need uh, five of those. And so what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna end up matting them. And when this is adhered uh, to my spine, this will be an opening and I will be able to slide that tag in and there'll be something at the end so it's easy to grab and, and take out, okay? So you are going to need five of these uh, photo mats uh, for inside the pocket that are six and three fourths inches by seven, okay? So I have my five cut. I'm just gonna set those to the side. And now I'm going to start putting um, some interactive pieces onto each of my pages so it's not just a front and a back. What's that? Oh, okay. All right. So when I think about my, uh, with this paper collection being called Attic Charm, I think, okay, you got to get into the attic. So I thought doors. And so what I want for the first page is to have um, an opening on each side, like two doors being open. Now, I like a little bit of space in the middle just because uh, it's easier to open and I might end up putting something, um, some sort of closure that I wrap around. Um, but I kind of like to see like a peek, like a little kid peeking through the door. So I like to have a little bit of space in there. That's just me probably being weird. But um, so to make the two flaps for the doors, you're gonna need two pieces at four by seven and a half. Okay, you need two of those. And then we are going to score uh, on the one half inch side. And then on this one, I scored, I turned my paper this way and scored with half, but I'll be adhering it so that um, the doors open out, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the score tape on. And I think I'm gonna uh, clip the corners just so that there's no overhang. I don't know if that's always necessary, but I always put my tape on first so that I get a good coverage and then I do the clipping. Make sure it's on real good. So when I put this on, see how I don't, I'm gonna clip, sorry, I'm gonna uh, miter the corner like at an angle just so that it doesn't come out or you, so that you can't see that. I'm just gonna go to the score line and out so it's cut like that. And then I'm gonna do it at the bottom too. And I'm gonna do that on both pieces. That looks like I went over the score line on my tape on that one. Okay. And on this video, I'm just going to show you um, the construction of the album. I'm not going to decorate it or, you know, put the mats on. So remember, you want the openings um, on each end. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere the first flap to the left-hand side. And I'm going to line it up at the edge. Okay, and give it a good 
burnishing to keep it adhered. I'll go ahead. I like to embellish my books a lot, and so I have a lot of 3D stuff. So the more you can um, burnish and get things flat, the better. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Get it to the edge. Okay. I think I'm even going to look, being because I think of my grandparents' house. I'm gonna. I remember always going back into the back room, and my grandma had this old purse that I would always play with. So I might try and find an old picture of my grandma and include her on my cover in some way because when I make these albums, I like to have a centerpiece of some sort on the front cover and a lot of times I use pictures of vintage girls, but I think my grandma might be on the cover of this one. All right, so that's all I'm gonna do on the first page. And like I said, I'm gonna end up putting, I, I'm not gonna put a magnet, I don't think. I'm gonna put something that I can kind of um, wrap some string around or something and it's again I you're gonna have an opening if you do it with my measurements because I kind of want to think of peeking inside so and then you'll have three sections on the inside okay so now I'm gonna have turn it over onto the back and on the back of the first page um, I am going to do um, a flap that uh, that opens up. So um, one of the pieces you're going to need to cut out for the back is an eight and a half by five piece and you only need one. Okay, that's eight and a half inches by five. And you are going to score on the half inch mark on three sides. Okay, so I've already um, done my scoring. I just need to go ahead and Burnish those half inch margins. Okay, so this is going to end up being a pocket, and so we need to get rid of the bulk in the corner. And so where the lines intercepted were from the half inch score, I'm gonna cut at an angle on each side to cut out that bottom piece. Okay, so I didn't do it straight. I went at an angle and I'm going to do that on the other side also. Okay. So this will be uh, the half inch margins now. We'll get score tape. You know what, I'm going to go ahead and uh, miter the top too. Just a little bit. Scraps out of the way. Okay. I'm gonna put my score tape on. You know what? Usually I put the score tape down first, like, so and then then cut it. But I didn't do that this time. Tape's down real good. Okay. Now, this is going to be a pocket at the bottom, like so. So I'm gonna take my circle punch and eyeball the center and just put um, kind of like a half circle so it's easy for me to grab things out. So I'm gonna, if this is seven and a half inches, Let's see, half a seven is three and a half. So about three and three fourths is the center. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use my circle punch and I'm going to, I probably shouldn't be eyeballing it. I should probably be measuring it. I'm a rebel, I didn't do it, okay. So I just clipped out a little, half uh, circle. Okay, so this is my writing sideways, but I make, make sure that you have the openings on the side and that your books go in the right direction. And I, when you slide things down, you don't want anything to get in the way. So you're gonna put the two sides down first and then that bottom piece is gonna go on top of them. 
That way when you place things in, it doesn't get caught on that bottom half inch fold. My nails are long enough that I can usually get that score tape paper off, but some people use um, an X-Acto knife. It's whatever works best for you. Okay, so I double check. Yep, it's opening on the side. Go down to the bottom, line it up. Uh, Okay, give it a good burnishing. Again, my albums get kind of thick. At first I was thinking about only doing four pages, but then I changed my other mind and decided on five. Okay, so now I want a flap coming over this to kind of hide that pocket. And so to do that, I cut a sheet of paper um, at seven and a half by four and a half inches. And in the scoreboard with your paper on the seven and a half inch, oh no, I'm sorry, you're gonna put your score paper or your paper in the scoreboard this way on the, so that the four and a half side, and you're gonna score at one half, okay? And fold on the score line. Put some score tape on. Make sure that's on real good. And I am gonna miter the corner. Just clip a little at an angle. Turn on the other side. Okay. And we're gonna adhere that. Oh shoot, that is not right. Seven and a half, why is that so long? Huh, okay, that's why I said watch me first. This doesn't look like, did I measure that right? No, that's eight and a half, it should have been seven and a half. So my measurements are wrong. So I gave you the right measurements. I just happened to measure mine wrong. So let me trim this real quick to seven and a half. So my measurements were right. My cutting was wrong. So I have to cut an inch off there. And then I'm gonna put another. Okay. And so now, ah, much better, easy fix. I'm going to place this on top so that it will open. Now, I am going to put a magnet closure. I have yet to get the magnets, so I am, am unable to show you, but I'm gonna be placing a magnet on this bottom piece and I would put one on the back of this flap so that it will stay closed. I can't show you that, I apologize, but you might want a different type of closure anyway. Just. And I'm going to turn this upside down just so it's easier for me. Go to the top, line it up, and push it down. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. Page, uh, first page, front cover, open the two doors, turn it over, and you're going to have a flap up and a pocket that you can put things in, okay? So I'm gonna put page one over to the side. We're gonna start page two. You should have all of these already put together. Remember, we have openings on each side so that the pages end up measuring seven and a half by seven and a half. And this is the side, okay? So on page two, um, I am going to uh, I thought of a trunk and like going into my grandma's back room and opening a trunk. And so what I did is I'm just going to have like the um, buckles of the trunk uh, on one side. So you are going to need um, a piece of paper at three and a half by three and a half. And we're going to score at the one half mark again. And I'm going to end up 
cutting the corners and putting a circle here so it's kind of going to look like the end of a tag. So let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. I'm not going to cut the circle yet until I mat it because then when I cut the circle I can cut through both the circle and the, I mean cut through the base paper and the decorative paper. So I have a punch, let me see if I have the right one, that's a straight edge, yeah. So three and a half by three and a half, fold it on the half inch. So down at the bottom, I'm going to angle that. Okay, so you see that? And then I'm going to end up punching a circle in the center. I'm going to put my tape on here. I don't know what I did before score tape, let me tell you that. And I just want to get in the habit of going ahead and clipping those corners at an angle. I just think it gives it a cleaner finish. Okay. And then you're going to need a piece of paper cut at three and a half by four and a half. And on the three and a half inch side, nope, I lied. It. Uh, you're going to turn your paper on the four and a half inch side. So if the four and a half inch side, score it a half. Okay. I'm going to fold back my score line. Put my score tape on. And I would say as you're making this album, um, I'm going to do a walkthrough when I'm done so you can see what it looks like. And sometimes it's probably a good idea to look at the final project before you actually make it. But um, uh, what was I going to say? Then you can kind of, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. It'll come to me later. Huh. I don't know. That's old age, people. Start talking and then you forget what you're saying right in the middle. Okay, so this is going to be at the bottom of the page. So that uh, score line will be at the bottom. So now we're going to angle the other corners. And again, I'm going to end up putting a hole here after I mat the paper. Okay. So I'm going to put this on my base page, not all the way to the end. I want it, to, you know, like on a trunk, you have room left over. So I'm going to place it, and you're going to have a space in the middle. And I'm going to end up putting seam, uh, seam binding in the holes and tying a bow to keep this closed. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom piece first. wherever you like the looks of it. And look, I did not miter my corners. I would like, I want to start doing that to all of them. I just think it looks nicer, but I forgot. Did I do it on this one? Yep. Okay, so you want the other piece to line up and there's gonna be a space in between, remember. Okay, can you see that? So I'm going to turn it upside down just because it's easier for me to adhere it that way. And I'm going to eyeball this and be as close as I can. And if I'm not exactly right, I'm sure my grandma would understand. It works for me. And push down. Okay, so... That reminds me of kind of a closure on a trunk. Once I get paper on, there'll be a hole here, a hole here, and I'll end up putting seam binding and tying a bow to keep it closed. And then you'll untie it and then they'll open. Okay, so the back of page two, we're gonna flip this over. Let me throw away some of my pieces of scraps over here. I'm trying to, my mom always said, a clean cook is a happy cook. I'm trying to be a clean crafter is a happy crafter. That doesn't always work that way, but. Uh, okay, on the back of this page, we are going to do an L pocket. And so it's going to just be a half pocket. You are going to need a piece of paper cut at 8 by 8 and after you cut that paper at eight by eight, you're gonna um, look at it as an L and you're going to score half an inch on the left side and then you want that score uh, at a half inch on the bottom. So on your score, 
Pal or your Martha Stewart score tool. Um, put it in at one side, score it a half inch, turn your paper, score it a half inch. Okay. Um, this is going to become a pocket. Um, I'm going to take the corner and get rid of that bulk by cutting at an angle where the two lines met. Okay. Fold back my score lines. And I'm going to put some tape on there. Am I in the camera? I hope so. I know I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. I'm like, wait, get back in the camera. I can't see. You know, I'm probably doing the same thing. I might move it just a hair, maybe. We'll see how that works. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put my score tape on. both sides here push it down okay so to make this an L pocket now this is going to be um, attached on top I want I want this to be cut off so I'm just gonna put it it's kind of by preference how um, much you want to cut off but I would I measured, I thought about two and a fourth inches over, and then I want the bottom to have about two, two and a fourth. So I'm just going to cut from one corner on the diagonal to the other corner. And it doesn't, I mean, it's just personal preference. It doesn't matter. I can't give you exact measurements. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Let me move this paper. Okay, so I just went at an angle. So now I'm going to adhere that to the back of the page. And let's see, if you put something in, you don't want to be interrupted. So I'm going to do the side first. And then bring up that bottom. Okay. Line up the bottom first, and then I'm going to make sure it stays lined up over here. Oh, I got a bubble. There we go. And just push down real good with your bone folder. Okay, so page two is done. We have this, this flap that's going to be opening. Remember, we're going to have holes here. Turn it over, and now I have an L pocket. And I may have to trim this. Uh, maybe not. It lined up good enough. Sides lined up. Huh, pretty good. Oh, I'm so dumb. Uh, I should be able to make it work. Here's why I said watch it first. Another reason. It might be easier for you to mat this back piece with your decorative paper first and then put on your pocket. I'm still going to be able to put my paper in there, uh, no problem, but it might be easier for you to actually cover this first before you put this pocket on, but we, you, whatever's easiest for you, okay? That's page two. How are we doing out there? We're two-fifths of the way done with our base pages. Let's start on our third page, making sure our flaps are on the left and the right. Okay, uh, let's take a look. So I am going to do, I gotta see what I decided. This is my belly band for the back. Um, pocket, fold down. I'm looking at my notes here. Okay, I think I, did I do pockets? Hold on, I gotta check something out. I think I did side pockets. No. Yeah, I think I did. Side pockets. No? Inside pockets? Alright, seven and a half by eight. That fold down. Maybe I 
did them side by side. Hold on. Yep, that's what I did. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Thanks for being patient. You are going to need two pieces that um, are cut at four and a half by four. You need two of those, four and a half by four. And on three sides, you're going to... Uh, going to score at the half inch mark. Half, half, and half. We're going to cut out those corner pieces to get rid of the bulk when we have our pocket on there. Cut an angle. Fold back your score lines and use your bone folder to press them down real good so it'll lay flatter. I used to not think that I didn't think that this was an important step. You know what? I'm going to do the top two, the mitering of the top corners. Ooh, saved. Glad I remembered that. Okay. So this is going to end up being a pocket. I hope I... Is that right? Uh, maybe I wanted them on here. I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, and now I'm going to do the second one. I'm talking to myself, sorry. I'm sure you guys do the same thing, right? Make me feel good so I don't feel stupid. But sometimes I just don't remember. I have these ideas. Uh, the score line's kind of weird. This one. And... Pull back up, oh, miter the top so that it's neater. Burnish, burnish, burnish. Go ahead and put our score tape on those three sides that we, the half inch sides that we folded over. Oh, get up there. One, two, and three. Okay, and the other pocket that we did. I'm going to put score tape on that one too. So we have two small pockets. I must not be a very good cutter of this tape. Some people seem to just be able to rip it off really super easy. I still struggle a little bit with getting a clean cut, but. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to set those to the side just for a second. And you are going to need a piece of paper cut at 8.5 by 4.5 inches, just one of them. 8.5 by 4.5, and, and that's what we're actually going to put the pockets on. So there'll be two front pockets, and then another pocket, and pocket, 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 just because I want a lot of openings. Uh, okay, so on the 8.5 side, inside your score pal, or whatever you're using, half inch on one side. And uh, then on the eight inch, uh, score at eight inches. So you have half inch on each side. Turn it the other direction, half inch. So again, three sides get the half inch. We're gonna start mitering our corners. I'm even gonna do the top, remember? Bottom corner, get an angle on each side. And at the top, just a little bit. Okay. Hold these back on the score lines. So I tried to come up with ideas that would be easy for a beginner. So some these are not hard things to do. Anybody should be able to make this. I'm hoping, that's the goal anyway, to still look nice and have interaction but not be so detailed that you feel overwhelmed. Okay, time for our score tape on this pocket. And 
And I don't know if you can tell in the video, but this paper is not white and it's not cream. It's kind of a pale pink color, but it's a real thick paper. So I don't like using the flimsy papers for the ba you know the main construction of my mini albums. Okay, so I'm going to take the tape off this long pocket that we just did. And I have some overlap. See, when I took off my um, tape, I have some overlap. So I'm just going to push that down. Not overlap, overhang. Push that down. I keep going out of camera. Sorry. Okay. And making sure that we have the openings on the side. This is going to be a pocket on the bottom. You know what? This looks too um, too late now, Randall. And then I'm going to place the other two pockets on top of that. So I have a pocket and a pocket. So there's a total of three pockets that will be on there at the bottom. Okay. And it'll look good once it's decorated. We'll put tags in there. And I'll add some interest. And I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. See, I have just, I don't know if you can see that, but I have a little bit of an edge, and that's okay. Next one. Take off my adhesive here. And I'm going to put a little bit of a space because I, I like, eh, no, I'm not. I'm going to butt it right up. Okay. Decorative paper. I'm just going to have to do a thin strip. Oh, I learned the heart. Okay. I just seen, I, I should have uh, put my decorative paper on there first. But I think I will. I know a way to. That I'm going to talk to you about here. Let me concentrate on this, and then I'll tell you. Okay, so here's what I'm going to tell you. Even though we have two pockets here, I'm probably going to have two tags, one in each pocket. But so that they don't roll back and forth and fall over, having the two separate pockets will keep them straight up. But when I mat this, I'm going to mat this whole thing going across so it looks like one pocket, not two. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I will do a walkthrough of the finished product and I'll, um, you'll be able to see that. So this will keep the tags that I make standing straight up because they're two separate. But when I mat it, I'm going to mat it all the way across so it looks like one pocket. Okay. And then... Um, I'm going to uh, finish up that page by um, having a seven and a half by eight piece cut. And on the eight inch side in your score pal, you're going to score it a half inch. I'm going to put my, I like the flaps. I don't know why on my, uh, mini albums. I like to have a lot of flaps that lift up. And it kind of reminds me of going back to my grandma's back room. Um, just the cardboard boxes she'd have back there and opening them up. You know how you fold them down so that um, they all overlap each other. Where did I put my scissors on? Miter the corner. And the other one. And again, I am going to use a magnet once I get them uh, to keep this closed because it's going to be pretty bulky. And this is going to be a flap that goes up. Okay, so we're going to put it at the top, but I'm going to turn it upside down so it's easier for me to put on there. Okay. 
right? And so this will lift up and that's what we have. And I, pro I might go back and um, put a decorative punch along this bottom piece, but I am gonna end up putting a magnet on the back here and then down here so that it'll stay closed. So the back page is gonna be fairly simple. We have to leave room for pictures too, so I like to have a lot of open spaces, you know, not just tons of pockets. I do need some um, place to map pictures. And so the back I'm just going to do um, a belly band. And so to do that, I just um, cut a piece at eight and a half by two, eight and a half by two, and then put it in your scoreboard on your scoreboard the long way, so the eight and a half way, and then do a half inch on each side. And I'm folding those down. Getting off camera, I can tell. I'm gonna put score tape on. And I am gonna do the corners after I put the score tape on. And this one I do kind of want to center on my page. Okay, make sure the direction of your paper is going the right way. And by just doing a belly band, that's going to cut down on the bulk too. And I'm just going to place that in the center. But here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to adhere this right now. I'm going to wait until... Nope. No, I am. Yes, I am. Because then when I'm at it, I'm going to lift this up. Okay, let me think about this. Do I want to put this down first and then stick a piece of map paper there? Yes, because I want to cover up these tabs. Duh. Okay. See, sometimes you got to think out loud. All right. Thanks for being patient with me. Please tell me that you go through the same things, the same thought processes. Okay, about center here at the bottom. It's getting pretty thick on the bottom. I'm not gonna lie with all those pockets on the other side. And at the top. So when I mat this, I'm gonna have to slide it underneath, but it'll work, okay? Flap up, pockets, turn it over, belly band. That's page three. We're getting there, folks. Two more pages. Page four. Okay, page four. Let me look at my notes here. How did I want to do that? Uh, okay, I'm going to have a side opening and two pockets facing inside here. So let's get started with the cutting of the paper. Four and a half by seven and a half. Just need one of those. And we are going to score it. Um, put the four and a half inch side on your scoreboard and score it four inches. Fold that down. Put your tape on. And I'm going to miter the corners. Okay, clip the corners at an angle. Okay, and that's gonna go on the side and open up. I'm gonna put that to the side for right now and I'm gonna have you cut two more pieces. You're gonna need uh, two pieces, four and three fourths by four and a half. Cut two of those and place your paper in your score pal so that you have the four and three four side and then score it a half, turn it, score it a half, turn it, score it a half. I'm going to clip those corners out.
fold on the score lines. I didn't realize until I started recording how much when I work, I have things really close up to me. Like I don't work with my arms out there. Everything's so close. I gotta make sure I get this out farther for you. Start putting your tape on. I would say that each mini album uh, takes about pretty close to a whole roll of score tape. However, I started using that art glitter glue uh, for matting and that helps cut down on the amount of score tape. I'll be using that when I put my decorative paper on. I'm gonna go ahead and miter these top corners too so you don't see that hanging out. And remember you needed two of these, so the other one I'm gonna do the same thing. Corners out. Burnish. Put tape on and then burnish the top, or not burnish, uh, miter the corners at the top. those corners at an angle, remember. Oh, sticking to my, tape sticking to my finger. Okay. So, making sure that your papers go in the right direction. You have an opening on each side. We're going to have side pockets. So we're not putting the pockets this way. We're going to go sideways so the opening is to the side so that your tags can hang out and not be stuck by the binding, okay? So let's take off our backing to our tape. Ugh, sticking to me. Okay. So I'm going to turn this just because it's easier for me to glue it or adhere it. And I'm going to line it up. Make sure it's lined up at the bottom and the side. And I'm happy with that. Okay, so remember, it's going to open to the side so that your tag can come out. And now we're going to, <laughs> I don't know. One, three, four. Oh, that's right. Remind, I need to look at this number for the back. Okay, talking to myself. Sorry. It's a reminder to me. Okay. Take that one off, too. Okay, so I'm going to turn it just so it's easier for me to stick this on butt it right up against that other pocket and it should take the full space. Perfect, love it when it lines. See how perfect it lined up just right. Love that. Okay. Okay. Now that piece that we had before is going to be placed on the right hand side so that we don't see the pocket sticking or the tag sticking out, but when we open it, we'll see those tags. So I'm gonna take that off, the backing, and I'm going to line it up with the edge, the uh, right hand edge, right side. But I'm gonna turn it so it's easier for me to stick down and eyeball it here. Okay. And burnish. Okay, so page four, the front. Um, again, I'll probably put a magnet, I don't know yet, to keep this closed, or I don't know what else I, yeah, I'm gonna end up putting a magnet on the back 
on here and then probably over here. So hmm, maybe up here. Okay. Turn that over. And we're going to do uh, layering pockets, like stair steps. Uh, you need two pieces at eight and a half by three and a half. Eight and a half by three and a half. You need two of those. And putting your paper to score, have it on the eight and a half inch side, score at a half and at eight. So you have half inch on each side and do that to both pieces. Okay, half and half. On one of them, you are going to also do a score line on the bottom. So that's going to be at the bottom of the paper so that your things don't fall out the bottom. So you're also on one of those papers, you also need to score a half inch at the bottom. I'm going to start getting rid of my corners or mitering those corners. Folding the half inches over. Put your tape on and I'm going to then clip those corners at the top too. Like I said, this will be like stair step pockets, like layered one on top of the other. Okay, so this is the one that's got the three sides. That's going to be at our bottom. This one we only scored on two sides so that you can have a really long photo mat that goes all the way to the bottom because this is open. Okay, so just score it on those two sides and put tape on the two sides. end here okay and I will be clipping the corners on this one too but I only have to do it on one side not the top uh, and the bottom because the bottom you won't see it'll be covered by that other pocket okay so I'll just do the top here and here okay so I just clipped the top so I need to measure one and three fourths inches down, one and three fourths. Can you see that? One and three fourths right there. And that's where I want the top of this pocket to be. So I'm just going to get a pencil and put a line at one and three fourths. Did I say one and three fourths? Yeah. Just a little line so that I can see where I want the top of the pocket. And again, when you mat, you're going to have to just tuck that paper down behind here. Okay, make sure I got it right. Yeah. Okay, so I want that line. Make sure it matches the sides. So then this pocket will go on top. Okay. Oh, crud. Sticking to my board. Okay. So I want this to line up at the bottom. So you have a pocket that can go all the way down and then a smaller pocket down there. 
That is the end of page four. One final page. We're close to an hour here. That's uh, pretty good time. But I had everything cut and ready, so I'm sure it's going to take you a little bit more. Okay, last page. Here's our seven and a half by seven and a half piece. Openings to the left and the right. And what I'm gonna do on this one, <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I have, okay, give me a second here. You are going to need two pieces. Where's it at? That measures seven and a half by five. Two pieces that measure seven and a half by five. You are going to place your paper in your score uh, board on the five inch side and then score it a half. And I'm trying to decide if I'm going to angle these two corners. I haven't decided so that my flap has a little bit of interest. Uh, for right now, I'm not going to do that, but I might do that later. And I'm going to put tape on here. And I'm going to minor those corners. Um, remember there's two, so this seven and a half by five inch also got scored at a half when it's in your scoreboard on the five inch side, scored at a half. Put our tape on, miter the corners. Maybe if I say it enough out loud, I'll remember to do it myself. <laughs> Now, I don't want these just to be plain old flaps that you open. Let me move this down. I don't want these just to be open, open. Um, I want more pockets. So I'm going to add a pocket to the bottom of uh, each of these so that when I open this flap, there's going to be a little pocket here. And when I have this pocket down, I'm going to have a pocket here. Okay, so to do that, I need two pieces of paper. They should be cut at eight and a half by three and a half. Eight and a half by three and a half. And we are going to put our paper in the scoreboard with the eight and a half inch side and score it half, turn it, half, turn it, half. So we have it scored in three on three sides. And you are going to do that to both pieces that you just cut at eight and a half by three and a half. We're going to clip the corners. We're going to burnish our score lines and then we're going to taper at the top. Both pieces. And fold these and score. Or I not score burnish. Get my words messed up. Okay. Get my tape. You know, I've watched so many videos and I see people, you know, having like a casual conversation. And I'm thinking, how do they focus and not get screwed up? I have to really think about what I'm doing or I'm going to make even more mistakes than I already have. So I apologize if I am not entertaining you and talking and having a great conversation. But if I do that, I am going to screw up. So just bear with me here. Okay, so I have one. The corners are uh, mitered. The bottom pieces were cut out at the angles. And now I'm going to do that to the other one too. I just got to fold it. 
burnish tape. Now, I am going to uh, let you know that as far as the actual cover, I am going to cheat in that Tammy Merrill from uh, Country uh, Craft Creations has a tutorial that explains exactly what I did. So to save time, I am just going to link her uh, YouTube the video that she used and explained how to do the binding and the cover so that it saves time on my end. I'll just link it and I did it exactly the same way. Um, so thank you, Tammy. I'm gonna refer people to her videos. And she, you guys, she has a bunch of tutorials. She has a lot of good ones to watch and you can purchase things um, from her store. The Blue Fern uh, Attic Charm Paper that I'm going to be using is from Country Craft Creations. The score tape is from Country Craft Creations. The glue I'm going to be using. Some of the embellishments and lace. So you should really check it out. Both her channel and her store. Okay, so here's what we need to do. So this is the paper that's going to be on the bottom that opens down. So I want my uh, pocket the opposite side of the score uh, line. So I'm going to place my pocket down here. Okay. So that when we open, we can have things inside and they won't fall out. At least that's the goal. <laughs> um. Okay, so the opposite of the score line. So down here, I'm gonna line this up. Perfect. And you guys, these books look so nice once you get your paper on. I just, I love them. Okay, so this will go at the bottom. When it opens, there's your pocket to store some hidden secrets. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere this one to the bottom of my seven and a half by seven and a half inch page, making sure that my openings are on the left and the right. I will probably use a magnet closure to keep these flaps down. Ugh. I still have to get the magnets. Okay, so this one will fold down and there's a pocket. And then grab the other one that's got the score at the top. That one's going to flip open. But we want the pocket at, on the same side as the score line this time. Because if our pocket's here, things will fall down. So you're going to place this pocket not at the score line, but a little bit above the score line. Because when we adhere this, to our page, we want the pocket down here at the bottom. So you have to go a little bit above that score line. Hope that makes sense. Come on, get off there, okay. Okay. So this will be my top flap. When I open it up, so it's gonna be on the side that we scored, we're gonna place this pocket a little bit above there so that it clears the score line. Oh, sorry, I gotta move this over. And see. But my lighting, I craft in my basement and my lighting is terrible. Those of you who have nice rooms to craft in, I'm so jealous. I'm in an unfinished basement. So, and in the winter, I'm in Nebraska. The winter, it's miserably cold down here. But I can't complain. I have a place to do it. And some people just have to do it on their kitchen table and pack everything up all the time. Okay, so now we're going to adhere this one to the top. And when we open it up, we've got that pocket there. 
Okay, and I'm probably gonna put some sort of stopper here, like from the paper collection, so that things don't fall out when I flip it down. So, again, hopefully um, you will have watched the finished walkthrough so that you can get an idea of what it's gonna look like when you're done. So I'm gonna turn this upside down just because it's easier for me to adhere it. This is really the top, but it looks like the bottom the way I'm putting it on. And I will be doing magnets to keep this one closed. Okay, so page five, open up, pocket, open down, pocket. Last part to the back of page five. So flip it over peoples. And this one is going to be similar. Uh, it's gonna be a side flap. No, why did I do this? Um, I have the wrong measurements on here. Let me change this real quick. There we go. Five by seven and a half. And I better just double check that because I don't want to lead you astray. Five. No, this says eight and a half. But it's supposed to be seven and a half. I got to trim it. Yes, five by seven and a half. Just need one of those. We are going to score with the five inch side on our score uh, board and go to four and a half and score. Hold it back and burnish. Put our tape on. Flip those corners. Okay, and it's gonna be another side door. I just kind of like those, I don't know why. But this time when we open it, there's gonna be a pocket down here, okay? So when it opens, pocket, side pocket. So to make that side pocket, you're gonna need it to be five and a half by four. You're gonna place the five and a half inch side up the top of your scoreboard, half on the left, turn it, half, turn it, half, so that you have the three sides. Take out those corner pieces at an angle. Get rid of the bulk, and my pages are pretty thick. I hope I made my spine thick enough, now that I think about it. I should, I hope. Okay. It's kinda late now, if I didn't, oh, I might have to make another one if it doesn't. Okay. Put our tape on. Okay. All right, so I want this pocket. You know, you could put the pocket on the outside if you wanted. That would make it look a little bit different than that last page. That one did, was just a door too. Should we put it on the outside or the inside? Outside, let's do the outside. I just changed my other mind. So I'm gonna take these backings off. I just made an executive decision on the front. All right, line up the bottom and the side here. Sorry. Okay, and that will flap open. Now I'm gonna turn this because it's easier for me when I glue, uh, tape things at the bottom. So that's page five. Open and down, turn the page off to the side. 
All right, those are our five base pages. You probably had to stop the video a couple times. It's probably closer to two hours for you guys. Uh, I am going to show you the cover and how to get started. But remember, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Okay. You are going to need two pieces of chipboard cut at 8x8. Eight eight. And this is a medium weight chipboard, 8x8, eight eight, two of those. Okay. So one, two. And I made my spine. Let me see. It should work. Um, I made my spine. Um, it's upside down. Sorry. Two and one half by eight. Two and yep, two and a half by eight. Okay, that's the chipboard. On the back of the chipboard, I placed score tape. Now let me just tell you. I used for the first time the 6x6 six six sheets from Country Craft Creations and boy did that save time. Instead of going one row after another row after another row, just slapping that baby on there. It was very, very helpful. So I did tape on the back. You know, when you're putting these books together, it's worth the extra tape because you want your book to stay together. So load that cover up with tape. So those, this is my 6x6 six six sheet in the center and then I just went around the edges with some other sizes that I had. So you do that to both, eight by eights, get tape on the back, okay? Now this is gonna be longer than a 12 inch piece of paper. So I had to attach two pieces together, okay? It's 10 inches long and it is, when I overlap the two pieces, 15 and six, it's about 21 and a half inches long. 10 inches down, what did I say? 21 and a half inches across, okay? And I just used score tape and it attached two pieces so you can see the seam. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to adhere these down. And what you, I like to do is the middle one first, okay? and center it in your paper. And then after that's down, I like to use the 1 4th inch uh, score tape and place a piece on the right of the spine and the left of the spine. And that will give you the spacing then as to where to put these two pieces of chipboard, okay? So you'll have 1 4th inch score tape, 1 4th inch, it just helps you so that your book is you know, you can bend it and it stays nice. And you're going to lay, uh, take the backs down off of the tape and lay those down. And then you miter the corners and then you bend over your paper and use the score tape to adhere it down. Again, what, I'm gonna link this to Tammy's. I'm just trying to give you a quick overview. Now, this is the hinge binding. This is five hinges. It's nice and thick and durable the way that Tammy um, does her tutorial. So um, rather than spend another half hour explaining how to do the hinge, I'm gonna have you go to Tammy's uh, video. Last thing, um, I will show you, I'm gonna go ahead and map mine, and I always, when I cut out my pieces of paper, I always go a fourth less of what the actual page is so that I have um, a one-eighth border on each side. So whatever I measure, so like this piece is seven and a half across, so I'm gonna make sure that my paper is seven and a fourth when I mat, because I like to have that nice border around the edge. This piece is four and a half down. I would cut mine to four and a fourth, okay? So it'd be seven and a fourth by four and a fourth. That way, did I say four and a fourth? Should it have been four. Seven and a fourth by, yeah, four and a fourth. So that way you can see the border, okay? So hopefully this was helpful putting the pages together. Um, I apologize for taking the shortcut, but thank you, Tammy, for letting me uh, refer people to your video. 
and I am going to mat everything and decorate and have a video with the walkthrough that you should probably watch before you put yours together just to kind of give you an idea. Thank you so much. Um, I hope this was helpful and I hope to do more tutorials. Um, I think that's a great way to learn from others and that's how I learned. Uh, and so I thank all the people who have also done uh, tutorials. Thank you and have a good one.